All right, thanks, Surendra. Uh, pleasure to be here with you guys today. Surendra, we can, you can hear me, see me, all the good stuff? Okay, good. Let's jump into it. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so I want to start out with a little story here today. So um, abiotic stress defense is the topic for the day. I wanted to start by throwing a picture of strawberries. We've seen several strawberry uh, fields in the talks previously today. And I wanted to tell, I guess, a little story here about kind of addressing abiotic stress in the field and how that can have ramifications down the cascade of kind of our production decisions. Uh, this strawberry field was, this picture was taken at the end of last year here the, uh, in May in the strawberry production uh, Oxnard area. And this grower utilized several of the tools we're gonna to talk about today and some of the concepts. And they were able to cut out three of their miticide applications and also had almost no rejections this year. So they were very happy with kind of how these principles played into their management decisions and in the long term saved them and made them money. So let's jump into it here. So um, I'm gonna do a little introduction to who Redox is. Then we'll talk about abiotic stress in plants, what that is, abiotic stress defense, how plants can deal with abiotic stress. Then we'll talk about a couple field examples as well. So Redox, uh, we exist to create passion and excitement in growing plants. And I hope I can bring that to you today and help help reignite that within you a little bit. Uh, we really just try to stick to our three key, key values of passionately authentic, creatively driven, and scientifically knowledgeable. To put it simply, Redox is a bionutrient company that focuses on sustainable plant nutrition. So let's jump into abiotic stress. So abiotic stress is, is um, any stressor occurring to the plant that's not caused by a living organism. You think heat damage, cold, oxygen, drought, over, overwatering, underwatering, salinity, my mineral deficiencies, all types of things like that. So not spider mites, not aphids, not powdery mildew, things like that. So that's kind of where the line is. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on initially here is abiotic stress. And up to 70% of the yield loss that we see in agriculture is really caused by um, abiotic stress uh, and can be directly linked to that. To, to some type of, of abiotic stress. So basically how it works in the plant is when the plant becomes uh, under stress from either, let's take let's take heat stress, for example. We just had several big heat events. So let's take heat stress. Um, it messes up the, the cellular machinery within the plant. And we start having what's accumulation of oxidative compounds. There's just unbalanced reactions happening within the plant chemistry that starts messing up um, metabolism within the cells. So those, if the plant doesn't have the ability to, to rebalance those, they will they will build up over time, eventually causing cell death and having yield loss issues. So nobody else has done this, but can we do this, Surendra, where we pop in a question here in the middle of the presentation? Or do you want to come back to these at the end? Okay, let's pop one in here. Question number one, which of, which of the following is not an abiotic stress? Spider mite damage, sunburn, nutrient deficiency, drought stress. I can't see it on my side. Can you pop up the poll? Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Julia. It's all good. Ooh, look, I even get to answer. Which of the following is not an abiotic stress? Okay. Probably good. What do we got, Julia? Very good. So abiotic stress is everything that so spider mites are living, so they are a biotic stress. So how do plants deal with deal with abiotic stress? So let's talk about the physiology of what plants are able to do. Now we're all familiar with this. This is how plants grow. We have sunlight energy, water, and carbo, carbon dioxide. Um, the plant uses photosynthesis to make carbohydrates. Those carbohydrates are then combined with um, other nutrients to make lipids and amino acids and overall build yield. So that's kind of our basic structure of how plants re respire and grow. Um, another whole cascade of compounds are also produced, however, these are secondary metabolic pathways. These are phenolic compounds, antioxidants, terpenes, um, overall uh, you know, uh, plant hormones, things like this that allow the plant to um, to deal with stress and react to certain conditions. Uh, so the the whole goal here is is providing inputs that allow us and, and provide the, the, the necessary fuel for the plant to make those secondary metabolic pathways and turn them on when they're needed and allow us to have a more resilient and resistant crop. So um, abiotic stress, I'm just gonna read this to you, is a negative impact of non-living factors on plant growth, yield, and quality. Abiotic stress will reduce photosynthetic activity, plant respiration, cell wall strength, 
and root growth and metabolism. Abiotic stress will lead to reduced antioxidant production in plants. The reduction in antioxidant production it can lead to increased susceptibility to bacterial, fungal, insects, soilborne pathogens, and nematode damage. So um, this is really where abiotic stress defense as a concept comes in. So if we're able to get that plant as strong as possible going into these stress events, that will limit the, the occurrence of stress on the plant. And many of these stressors cascade into biotic issues, think spider mites or mildew under cloudy conditions or something like that. So let's jump into, I'm just gonna run through some abiotic stresses just to highlight some. Weather is a big, is a big, um, is a big one that we deal with. Obviously, we just talked about having this huge heat event that we had. High heat causes low respiration as well as cold can do the same thing. Lack of sunlight, we're seeing that in a lot of regions right now with low sunlight conditions from smoke. Um, this reduces photosynthesis and that will cause poor sugar development and things like that. Uh, soil moisture, um, if we ever do have a wet winter or we have over irrigation, soil moisture can be a big challenge, humidity and precipitation. Um, agronomic practices, sometimes we do these things to ourselves where we cause plant stress. That would include poor irrigation water management, chemical injury from phytotoxicity from an overspray or herbicide damage or something like that. Um, soil management practices, poor root, poor root development from compaction or poor salt, salt buildup or something like that. And then plant and soil nutrition. Um, this is really where a lot of, a lot of uh, interaction comes down to it. We have nitrogen. We can have poor metabolism from over-application of nitrogen. I'm sure we've all seen that where we have a big application of nitrogen. And then we have pest populations show up very soon after. Uh, potassium um, is a very important uh, nutrient when it comes to water movement as well as nutrient assimilation. So um, calcium and silicon, if we're deficient there, we end up with weak cell walls and poor antioxidant production within the plant. And soft fruit, phosphorus and carbon can really influence how our roots develop. And then micronutrients overall can have poor, can really influence our uh, just enzyme production and other physiological uh, uh, processes within the plant that can really decrease our photosynthetic activity. So here's an example. I wanted to throw this up. I did my PhD work in silicon, so it comes near and dear to my heart. And um, this is just an example showing on the left, we have a plant, we have a cell that, um, a plant that was grown, so let's say under high nitrogen conditions where we have poor calcium and, nit and silicon availability. We have a poor cuticle development, poor cell wall structure that allows for a fungal spore to have easier access into the plant and to proliferate in, in, the, in the tissue. Um, as opposed to on the right, we have a stronger cuticle, a stronger cell wall, all of those things function to help that plant um, um, resist um, fungal infection or other, or other stressors. So the abiotic stress cascade is how I'll, how I'll refer to it. And we really see when we have an abiotic stress, a lot of, those, a lot of the times it can end up priming the plant to have a biotic issue. Um, so we have bacterial pathogens really like these low photosynthetic activity and low antioxidant production within the plant. We have fungal, same thing. We have this low respiration um, conditions can really be beneficial for fungal growth. Insects love weak cell walls and other arthropods. I'll say arthropods. That's probably the proper way to put it there. Um, loves weak cell walls and and um, easier access into the into the leaf and into the nutrition. And then nematodes really thrive in conditions where we have poor root development. Um, and poor and poor root metabolism. So the um, Redox has put together four products that um, are currently available in the market that we really find to help with this increase in abiotic stress defense. DICAP increases plant restoration, Oxycom calcium accelerates photosynthesis activity, Mainstay SI fortifies cell wall strength, and RootRx stimulates root growth and metabolism. So I wanna talk about two of these, the last two notably here. Um, Mainstay SI, it fortifies cell wall strength. It's 10% calcium, 22% silicon dioxide, and really helps to fortify cell walls, really helps to build a stronger plant. It's also available in an organic formulation. It can be a great tool in organics to help um, just build a stronger crop that can deal with stress better. Basically, what's happening is when we don't have calcium or silicon in the system, we have a weak cell wall that doesn't stand up well to stress. When we add calcium to the system, which we're quite often doing, um, we get a better cell wall, better cuticle on the plant, and when we add silicon in, we get um, even better deposition of calcium as well as silicon into the tissue, and that can give us a much more resilient and strong plant with fortified cell wall strength. Um, the next product was RootRx. It's, it stimulates root growth and metabolism. It's a botanical extract, and um, 
and really increases antioxidant production and root growth within the plant. Really what we're talking about here is, is that center part, that secondary metabolic pathway driving the production of those compounds within the plant and allowing us to have a, a stronger crop. So let's jump back, let's jump out in the field. I wanna kick it off with a trial that Surrender did on Root RX, um, improving, uh, improving in tomatoes. We've talked about tomatoes a lot today. Um, and so Dr. Dar did this uh, last year, two years ago, sorry, on, on some tomatoes in Shafter. Pretty simple program, a quart of Ruterex at transplant and then a half gallon three weeks and then three weeks later again for a total of a gallon and a quart. Um, simply looked at yield and, and chlorophyll measurements with a SPAD meter. Uh, we saw that because these plants were able to deal with the stress of growing in Shafter, which if anybody's been to Shafter, we know there's plenty of stress in Shafter, um, that the plants were able to assimilate more nutrition, set more fruit, and produce a higher yield um, 27 percent more than the control. We also saw that because of that stronger root system, better dealing with stress, we also saw a greener plant with better chlorophyll content with a 5 percent bump in um, chlorophyll content over the grower standard. Um, all of this just comes back to allowing that plant to deal with stress better and as that crop was developing it can pull up more nutrition, set that more into fruit, uh, color up better, and get a better harvestable product. Um, next, I want to jump over to some mainstay SI where we can build a stronger plant through fortified cell wall strength. We did this in lettuce. Um, this was done by David Holden down in Camarillo area, looking at a combination of die cap and mainstay SI to on their impact on increasing increasing cell wall strength. And we used uh, downy mildew as an indicator here to see how strong we can make the plant. Um, so visual rating was a of, of the of abiotic stress, three pounds die cap, half a gallon of mainstay calcium or mainstay or mainstay SI applied. Uh, this was as a foliar application, basically making a stronger plant. We saw we just saw incidence of downy mildew decreased with the um, with the addition of the die cap and mainstay SI into the program, allowing us to have a stronger uh, uh, a stronger efficacy of that fungicide product. We also had the same thing with downy mildew uh, severity. We'll skip that for sake of timing. Um, mainstay SI, we're going to look here specifically in berries. So big, big issues in berries is obviously coal rate and shelf life. Um, and a lot of that coal rate can come down to soft fruit as well as other, as well as other re re reasons. Um, so let's jump in here. We did this. It was a well-replicated field demo or field trial that was done by an in-house research team at a berry grower. And we looked at the use of Mainstay SI, um, which is delivering um, bioavailable silicon into the, in, to the root zone um, against just a grower standard program where this, this was just added, added on top of the standard program. It's done Oxnard uh, in the spring production, well, the, the winter and spring production. And looked at a half gallon of mainstay SI every every 14 days as as allowable due to the weather. There were several applications that were missed due to a wet a wet winter that year. And then we looked at total yield. Um, and I, I wanted to focus here on kind of this percent change in yield with mainstay SI. So we saw this this is percent increase over the grower standard program. They didn't want to share their exact poundages, as I'm sure many of you familiar with growing strawberries. Uh, people don't always like to share what their total trays they, they produced was, but they're happy to tell you how much better or worse they did. So um, in this case, we actually saw a 7% or a little over 7% increase in total pounds. We actually saw an 11% increase in marketable pounds. So that comes down to a much, so we have higher production, but we also have a lower coal rate, which overall gives us that 10% bump in, um, in trays produced. So that was very, very, uh, very good. And, um, in a follow-up study, we looked at the 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 impact of mainstay SI on shelf life um, in similar in similar conditions, and we saw that we had uh, a fairly substantial increase in the amount of fruit that was still marketable after seven days in storage. So you can see here these are clamshells that were pulled out after seven days, looking at how much fruit was still marketable, and you can see that. The amount of um, uh, shelf life was substantially greater on at seven days with the Redox program of Mainstay SI uh, versus the grower standard. So I want to jump into my second question here: Abiotic stress can induce biotic stress. True or false? Let's see if we can pop them up. There we go.
All right, there's our answers. True, very good, look at that. Okay, awesome. Okay, 100%, that's great. They all get to pass today. Okay, key concepts, just a quick review here um, on some of the key concepts that we covered. I think that that uh, second focus question, we'll call it, really kind of summarizes the, summarizes the talk. Uh, really, plants have the ability to deal with many of the stressors that come through the field. We, as farmers and agricultural professionals, um, do our best to give that crop the resources it needs to produce the most economically sustainable and viable and profitable um, uh, farm product that we can. So um, here at Redox, we think we've developed several tools that can help push that yield beyond current expectations and help to build a stronger a stronger crop that can deal with an assortment of stressors. If the last couple seasons have taught us anything, um, the weather and other stress is getting more and more extreme every year. So having a more resilient crop is going to pay dividends um, year over year as things continue to uh, continue to probably hit this new status quo of extreme heat, extreme cold, extreme wind, and so on and so forth. So can't do anything for labor, but at least we can help build a stronger crop. So um, main stay SI. I think this is really the key here. Build a stronger crop, get better fruit quality. Um, this is true from lettuce to to uh, to fruiting crops and 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 other and other regions as well. Um, application rates we're looking at mainstay SI. Most foliars going at quart to a pint. Um, if we're looking at fruit firmness on an everbearing crop like strawberries, that's going out in every spray. Um, if you're looking at a at a more staged out crop like um, let's say avocados or something like that, or citrus um, or even peppers. You can see in the picture there, um, we're going to more target that around that early fruit development, early cell division, you know, three, you know, the first one to three weeks after bloom um, is where we're putting that in. And then for leafy greens, where we're looking to target things, we're going to have a light rate throughout throughout crop development. Uh, root RX really helping with uh, stimulate root growth and metabolism. That is going to hit us at that um, um, a quart to a half gallon application. I think this is my second last slide, so I hope I... Uh, communicated that Redox exists to create passion and excitement about growing plants and gave you guys some new things to think about. Here's my contact info. I'm happy to take your questions now if we have any time. I see. I see here from Greg. Go ahead. Are you going to read it? We have done um, a couple different trials looking and mostly in field demos, looking at vegetable transplants, especially with plant tape stuff, looking at putting out root RX to help with um, root development. Um, and then we've done some work in the nursery stock as well, helping produce better roots and things like that in the transplant. So we've done a little bit. I can, I can track those down for you if you want to reach out to me um, after I'd be happy.